The Quilting Triangles Shawl is a new modular design that's super easy to knit with a really fascinating construction method. You're going to knit this shawl with five colors of fingering weight yarn. I used Punk Rock Unicorn in their super soft base called Soul. It's a really soft merino yarn that's plush and velvety. There's five colors. So if you want a similar contrast effect, get a high contrast color palette with a dark, a light, a bright, and a couple colors in between. Five total colors, so get light to dark with a color pop and you'll get a, an effect like this. Five colors, one skein each. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the modular techniques about picking up stitches, how to attach the sections together as you knit, and where to pick up stitches on the corners of the shapes. And once you do those techniques in this video, it's really easy and repetitive throughout the shawl. So pay close attention in the beginning with these technique tutorials coming up, and you can skip ahead in this video with timestamps. I put timestamps down below, so if one part is easy for you, just click on the timestamp below to skip ahead to that row or section that you're like, what is that in the pattern? So as you follow this video, you're gonna wanna download the painting, not painting, quilting. We're into quilting color blocks now, this quilt inspired shawl. You're gonna wanna download that quilting triangles shawl or the modular coloring ebook. I'll put links to the pattern and ebook down below as well, but it's such a fun garter stitch, relaxing type of project, and you'll get this big, beautiful triangle that is just perfect for those single skeins, customize it with your own colors and leftovers. I used about four grams of yarn for each triangle. So that's a good indicator. If you've got a stash bucket, oh, oh my gosh, this would be the most quilt-tastic triangle shawl. I think that would be so fun to use your leftovers with all those little color pops and small bits of yarn. About four grams for each triangle. Get those yarns together. And in the pattern, there's also a schematic illustration for you to color in the lines, plan your color palette like a little coloring book in the pattern. So print out that page to plan your patterns, to plan your colors, and let's get to those fun construction techniques for the quilting triangles shawl. Let's make it. This is the completed pickup for triangle three, and I'm gonna show you how to pick up stitches from that previous color A triangle. The first time this happens is in row one, right side, for triangle three, where we're picking up along the edge. I'm going to show you for triangle five, it's the same technique. So this is row one, right side of the triangle three instructions. It says using A, pick up and knit three stitches into the final color A selvage stitch from the right edge of the previous color A triangle. Okay, that's a lot of words. Just ignore all of that and get three stitches right here. And this is how you do it. Start by going into this back strand. I'm gonna call this the front strand and this is the back strand of that selvage stitch with color A, knit one into that back strand and then we need to knit one into that front strand and then knit one one more time into that back strand. You gotta rotate your work a little bit so you can see the back of it. Basically just get any three strands as long as you get three stitches it should look something like this. So one more time, it's that final selvage stitch from the previous color A triangle. Get your color A. And if your color A is already attached, then you can just keep on using that attached color A. But picking up and knitting three. One. Two. And three. You can get anything you can find when you look towards the back of the fabric, but I'm getting that back strand again. Three stitches, and then at the end of row one right side, slip one with yarn in front, like this. I'm slipping a picked up stitch, that next color. I'm slipping both legs, picking up both legs of that selvage stitch, and that's what the end of row one looks like. I'm ready to turn and work row two. Keep on following the instructions. You're going to knit those two together on row two. Knit two together. That picked up stitch and that color A stitch. I'm gonna do a make one left. I'm gonna pick up a strand of yarn. 
to make one left, like that. Knit one, make one left. Pick up a little strand of yarn between the stitches and make one left. You can use any increase you like, but I did that make one left. If that's tricky for you, you could also instead just do a backwards loop cast on for the make one instead of a make one left. But I'm going to do that make one left. It's nice and tight and tidy. And then slip one with yarn in front. You should have five stitches after row two. Keep on following the instructions for this new triangle. And as you increase and make a new triangle with color A, you will be picking up the next selvage stitch at the end of each right side row. So keep on following the rows closely as you modularly join your triangles together. Once you have your color A and B triangles made for 15 total triangles in the pattern, I'm going to do triangle 16, which starts down here at the beginning. So this was my triangle 1, this was triangle 2, so I'm going to begin triangle 16 right here. We're going to make a mirror image triangle, same as triangle 3, but triangle 16 starts right here. Row 1, right side, using A, got color A, the same color that you began triangle 1 with. Pick up and knit 3 stitches into the final color A selvage stitch from the left edge of the previous color A triangle. So this is the left edge, that last selvage stitch. You see two legs of yarn from that selvage stitch. Go into the front one first, one, and then go into the back one, two, and then go into the front one again, and three. That's three stitches. One more time, go into that front strand, pull color A through, go into that back strand, wrap the yarn around and pull it through, and the front one again. You might have to move your needle a little bit to, oh, did I get the front one? Yes, I did. Three stitches. However you get those three stitches is okay. Basically, you just don't want a huge hole and you want three stitches coming from that last selvage stitch from the previous color A triangle. So I have my three stitches, row two, wrong side, knit one, make one left, pick up a little strand between the stitches, like this, I'm going to make one left. That's a really tight increase. If that increase is a little difficult for you, you could do a make one with a backwards loop cast on. So this method works for a make one instead. Knit one, make one left. Make one left. Again, if that make one left is too difficult, feels too tight, just do a backwards loop cast on like that. Or if you hold the yarn in your right hand, you could do a backwards loop cast on like this. So I'm going to do that make one. I like how tight and tidy that make one increase is. And then slip slip knit. We're at the final stitch and we need to slip slip knit. So slip that last stitch knit wise. Slip this next selvage stitch. I'm looking at the wrong side. I'm going into the front, getting both legs of that first selvage stitch that I see from that color B. And then we're going to knit those two together through the back loop. So I put my left needle into them again and pull the yarn through. Let me do that one more time. This is the slip slip knit. We're going to do this at the end of every wrong side row. Slip that last stitch knitwise, pick up a selvage stitch, knit those two together like that. Turn to work row three, right side. We're going to slip one with yarn in front, place the yarn in back, 
So place the yarn in that gap. Don't place it on the needle, just the yarn was in front, like this. Place it in back. Now knit front back. Knit front and back. Knit to last stitch. Slip one with yarn in front. Row four, wrong side. Knit front back. Knit into the front and back of the stitch. Knit to last stitch. I'm at the last stitch. Slip, slip, knit. Slip that last stitch knitwise. Slip the next selvage stitch. We already went into that one. So now we go into the next one. Knit those two together like that. So keep on using those same techniques, repeating rows three and four until all of your new color A stitches are attached to those color B stitches to make an identical triangle. Just like what you did in, it should look like just, just like triangle three, but this will be triangle number 16. I'm showing you early. You should have more triangles over on this side of your fabric, but I stopped early just to show you. So this should be triangle 16 to match my sample that I knit and we'll keep on increasing. And don't worry too much about that pickup. If it's not exactly like mine, don't worry. You could always sew it closed later, but it should look like that as you build your triangle and attach it to the previous edge section. Let's do triangle 18. This is going to be a downward triangle, similar in shape to these. But the first time you work triangle 18, we're going to use color C. So make sure you look at your color map in the illustration on page three of your PDF. And we're gonna do this triangle right here. So you should have all of these triangles, one through 15, 16 and 17. And then whenever you have this negative space, this V shape right here, that means we need to do a triangle 18, a downward triangle. So the first time you do it is with color C, but sometimes later in the pattern, so we're doing this color C right here, sometimes later it might be a color E or maybe you're doing it with the color B later. So always look at your color map and make sure that the triangle that you're working on in your shawl corresponds to the correct colors, uh, the color letters in that schematic map. So you have your numbers and the color letters on page three of your pattern. Triangle 18, pick up and knit three stitches. Whenever it says pick up and knit three stitches for triangle 18, I'm talking about right here in the center of that V. So going into that, the tip of that previous color, get any three strands of yarn along this triangle tip. One, pick up and knit a second one. It could be one strand or two strands of yarn that you're going into. As long as you get three strands, it should look something like that. If it looks a little wonky, we have this little tail from our pickup that we could weave in ends later to hide any holes or anything. After you pick up and knit three stitches, slip one picked up selvage stitch with yarn in front. I wanna get this color. So this is the edge we're going to be picking up for this section. So get the first selvage stitch like this with yarn in front. Row two, wrong side, knit two together. Knit that picked up stitch and that new color stitch together. We're gonna do a make one left by picking up a little strand of yarn. If that make one left is a little complicated for you, then you can just do a backwards loop cast on instead. But I'm gonna pick up a strand and do a make one left. Knit one, make one left that little strand of yarn, knit it through the back loop for a make one left, or do just a regular make one if you wanna do that instead. Slip, slip, knit. The last stitch knitted together with a picked up stitch. So I'm gonna slip that last stitch knitwise, 
pick up that first selvage stitch from this edge and knit those two together like this. One more time, slip that last stitch knitwise, insert the right needle tip into that first selvage stitch of this color, knit those two together. Ooh, ooh, just like that. Next row, row three, slip one with yarn in front. The yarn is in front, slip one, place the yarn in back, right there. Knit front back, knit to the last stitch, slip two with yarn in front. The yarn is in front, slip the last stitch, and the next picked up selvage stitch. Row four, wrong side, knit two together, knit front back, knit to last stitch, and slip, slip, knit. Slip that stitch knitwise, slip that next, or pick up that next selvage stitch, and knit those two together, like that. Keep on following rows three and four until you have 47 stitches. You always want 47 stitches at the ends of these downward triangles all the way to here and your stitches will be picked up and after your picked up stitches are connected to this new triangle with color C, you're going to work triangle 19, which will be an upward triangle that looks like these. And then after that, after you work triangles 18 and 19, you're going to have another V over here and a little negative space here and you'll keep on repeating. So you're going to repeat triangle 18 with the correct color to fill in that space and then a triangle 19. So let me show you. Always look at the map. So those are all the techniques for this shawl, but follow the map closely. We did triangles one, two, three, and we have our live stitches over there, 16 and 17. This is always with color A and this one's always with color B. So we always have colors A and B at the edge. So that very far left edge triangle facing downward is always going to be color A, and this one's always going to be color B, but then in the middle, pay really close attention. So as you're repeating the instructions, so you're doing a downward triangle, and then an upward triangle, and then you're going to repeat and do a downward triangle, and then an upward triangle. Make sure you have the right color for each triangle, and then after you finish those and you have more live stitches, you're going to go to here again and pick up at the edge. So that was triangle 16 you're going to repeat, triangle 17 you're going to repeat, triangle 18, a repeat of triangles 18 and 19, 18 and 19. That's what I'm talking about in the pattern when I say repeat triangles 18 and 19. And then you go here and build those, and then here and build those, and then here and build those. So you're building one diagonal column at a time, but look at that schematic, schematic illustration I included and make sure that your numbers, your numbered triangles match the colors in that schematic as well so that you get the same kind of color placement. Um, this was just a little draft. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is about the size of the design. I did eight total triangles on the edge here. So make sure you're following the instructions closely and looking at the number and making sure that matches the color that you want, depending on what triangle you're working on. So as you repeat the instructions, look really close at what you're knitting and making sure it matches that map that I gave you on page three of your pattern. So keep on knitting. It's really easy garter stitch. And once you get the hang of it, it's really repetitive and really easy. But follow these first sections closely to get the hang of it. And then you'll be off and racing towards that beautiful triangular finish. Well, I hope that wasn't too hard for you. Once you repeat those skills, it's really relaxing as you go, but you gotta pay close attention in the beginning. And just remember at any time during this pattern, it's garter stitch. 
So if you're off a stitch or two stitches or three, just sneak in an extra stitch, okay? Sneak in an extra increase at the edge. It doesn't matter, okay? Just get back on track later. Try not to rip out. Just make sure you've got triangles and knitting and colors. And yeah, if you're off a few stitches, just sneak it in later or yeah. Just get back on track. It doesn't matter. It's just garter stitch. It's very forgiving. But this is your finished shawl. It's so beautiful. I think you're going to get addicted and want to make another one in other colors. Because I did these five color versions, but I'm already starting to think of like a really multicolor, like, you know, those scrappy patchworky quilts that are really random with all those leftover fabrics. Let's do that for your triangles. And maybe even one triangle is a color, but then you do a different color for the tip of that section. <gasps> and you can make a totally different pattern by doing a scrappy, stripey. <gasps> what if one triangle is faded and the other triangle is like a tweed? Oh my gosh, this is like my stash busting dream come true. So I want to see what colors you put together and make sure you tag those with hashtag quilting triangles shawl on Instagram, share them on Ravelry. We're gonna get inspired by each other's color palettes and learn some of these fun modular construction techniques. It's really easy, and once you practice all these techniques in the modular coloring shawls ebook, you can apply all these modular connection techniques that we learned to all the shawls in the collection. So you can download more of these modular designs on Ravelry or westknits.com, but this is one of my favorites in the collection. I just love the simplicity and how it all comes together with the triangles color blocking and forming the overall triangle shape. Do you love it? I think it's one of my favorites. So can't wait to see what you do with this pattern and there's more coming soon. So I'll see you in the next video.